I want to welcome you to what promises to be a stunning presentation of images about festivals surrounding petitions for rain in the central part of the state of Guerrero, Mexico. I'm Mary Wheaton, the president of Austin Friends of Folk Art, and we are absolutely delighted to be co-sponsoring this event with the Mexican Center of the Teresa Lozano Long Institute for Latin American Studies here at UT. We're delighted for two reasons. One is that George O. Jackson Jr.'s photography is really important and deserves the widest possible audience. The other is that for 23 years, Austin Friends of Folk Art has been promoting folk art and the cultures that produce it through lively programs and grants that support artists, educators, and others who document the processes of these endangered arts. George O. Jackson, Jr. has a rich heritage in Mexican culture. On his mother's side, he's a descendant of Manuel Maria de Llano, who was the mayor of Monterey and twice the governor of the state of Nuevo Leon. His great uncle, Rodrigo de Llano, was the publisher of Excelsior, a major Mexico City newspaper. At the onset of the Mexican Revolution, his great-grandfather, Ruben Villarreal, a silver miner in northern Mexico, relocated the family to Laredo, Texas, where Jackson grew up. He recalls that his fascination with the cultural activity of Mexico was sparked during those early years. George wasn't always a photographer. As a young adult, he was a successful restaurant owner, entrepreneur, and UT student. In 1977, he decided to begin documenting his personal life through photographs. He accompanied friends, botanists, and researchers to the jungles of southern Mexico and made photographic records of the trips. His fascination with Mexican indigenous folk culture, especially festival celebrations, continued to grow. And in 1984, he became a full-time photographer. Jackson recognized the importance of documenting vestiges of ancient traditions and the beautiful rituals at their heart and he spent 11 years from 1990 to 2001 photographing the dance, costume, music, ceremony, folk art, ephemera, architecture, and people that make up these diverse celebrations. This was the Essence of Mexico Project, a visual legacy to the cultural life of more than 60 indigenous cultural groups of, of Mexico at the turn of the 21st century. His work includes 76,124 color 35 millimeter slides, 16 audio cassette tapes, and one CD narrative of the collection, all of which is held here at, at UT in the Nettie Lee Benson Latin American Library. Selections of these photographs have been widely exhibited at universities and museums throughout the US and Mexico. In 2007, Jackson was given a one-man show at the Smithsonian's National Museum of Natural History in Washington, DC. His success has been largely due to a combination of great technical skill, an extraordinary photographic eye, an uncanny ability to be invited to witness rarely photographed festive events, and pure old-fashioned tenacity. Please welcome George O. Jackson, Jr. Thank you. Thank you very much. Welcome. And I'm just delighted to see you all here to sh show you some of the very most fascinating things that I found in the, my 11 years in meandering Mexico. Um, what you're going to see tonight are a lot of pictures that um, I had to cram into an hour presentation, and, um, but they represent seven, seven years of actually returning to a lot of these places seven times over the, the 11 years I was in Mexico to get more because it is some of the most fascinating um, and some of the richest cultural activity that I've encountered down there. So um, what I'm going to show you are the rain petition to the Guerrero Indians and the, the um, they, they have to do with uh, propitiation and sacrifice. 
when you see these pictures, you have to realize that the people that, um, that are practicing these festivals and all are, um, have been living for the last, say, the last 30 days or so out of mud holes. So they're, all their water has, has like been used up and, and the rains haven't started. And it's really, really getting hot and the, the, their fields are planted and the birds are stealing the seeds. And, and uh, there are little bugs that come out, these little stinging gnats that come out during the dry season that are besieging all these different people. And, and so they're, they're going, they're pulling out all the stops to help make it rain. And these people believe they've always been of a mind that in order to receive a favor, that it's better if they give one. And they feel that they can't um, receive a favor unless they, unless they actually show the gods that they're serious about their petitions, which is what you're going to see now. Collectively, the names of these festivals are the Festivals of the Holy Cross, except for the first one that we're going to go to now, which is um, this festival is the Tlapanek Indians. This is Eastern Guerrero, right on the Oaxaca border in a town called Zapotitlan Tablas. And these people are, are part of the Tlapa, T-L-A-P-A-N-E-C, Tlapanek culture. And they're dancing a chilena there. But, uh, and they do a lot of this, and they take flowers around and drape them on the saints and all that in town. But, but we're really, this is a, a, a typical, one of their kitchens. And, um, but what we're really here to do is to go up and have this, this ceremony on top of this mountain. And we walked up there, and we finally got up there about uh, 8 or 9 o'clock at night. It was already starting to get dark. And the very first thing that they did is that they started, uh, they, they went to a place, their ceremonial site, where they have these rocks that are known as the San Marcos. And uh, they're rocks that are imbued with the, with the um, spirit of the, of the rain god. And what they do is they, these are all leaves and things that they left the year before to cover up the altar site. And they're clearing all of that out now and starting to, to do, uh, make the preparations for the, for, for the festival. And that man is pouring an egg on there that has something to do with purification. So he's purifying it. The very first thing they did is they knocked off, <clears throat> after they took the brush aside, they broke some branches off and, and um, swept the ground until it got uh, hard. And then they drew a picture of the face of the sun in the dirt. And then they proceeded to build this corral around, the, around there. And this lanyard that they did is one of their, one of their sacred objects that, that, that uh, sanctifies that fire that's going to happen. They start the fire, and, as if they, and, and when the fire really, really starts burning at its hottest, they come out with, these, with three turkeys. Here's, here's one, and then they chant and swing them around and this and that. And one by one, they throw them into the fire. And as long as the turkey stays in the fire, that means that the sun is happy with the pr preparations that have been made up to that point. It's an act of a divination. And being as that all the turkey stayed in the fire, that meant that it was okay, among other things, for me to stay up there and get these pictures. So anyway, after I was approved by the sun, it was, it was pretty easy. <laughs> and then what they do is they, they take these bundles of greenery and, and stuff up there, and then they decorate. They decorate the altar site. These are the, um, what they call the San Marcos, the, the, the sacred rocks that are around the, around the altar site. And these, are, uh, they have, th these rocks have been, been there since pre-Columbian times. This is a pre-Columbian ceremonial site. Anyway, once they have the altar decorated and all, uh, then they bring out and they sacrifice two goats. And they dump the blood from the goats at the base of these rocks. And um, they're offering blood to the, to the rocks. And there's, there's a, one of the, one of the um, well, from the first, first some, you know, an offering from the first goat. And some prayers are said. And then they kill another goat. And they put, uh, they put both of these dishes of, of uh, blood and the goat's hearts in front of these, these are some more rocks in here, but they were too sacred to let me see them. And uh, later on, I kind of got a glimpse and, and, and knew that I'd seen the same ones, of their moonstones, and I'd seen them at, at uh, Pineda's rock shop in Tasco. So they're actually using uh, modern rocks, to, but they're imbued now with the, with the um, spirit of the, of the god. Anyway, so that's, 
what they do, and then they, um, there's a lot of praying and, and offering and that goes on. There, he's uh, giving some mezcal to the, to the earth, um, all in hopes of, of uh, achieving a, a good rainy season and, and getting a good harvest out of it. This is now switching over to um, another town. This is a very different kind of festival. This is uh, the festival of S San Jose Obrero, or St. Saint Joseph the Worker. And this is in Chilapa, Guerrero, which is kind of like a, a center for a lot of these little villages that you're going to see in a minute. But um, these, are, these ladies are known as Acatecas, and they're from a town called Acatlan by there, and this is their typical uh, dress. And I'm sure you all have seen those at El Interior. These are some cross-dressers that were in the, <laughs> in the, in the parade. And a folk art devil. A lot of these pictures are picked out to, to show you because uh, at, at folk art objects. This is um, St. Joseph riding on the back of a truck, a tableau that is part of the procession. Here he is in, uh, in the church. They say that they have this festival for St. Joseph because nobody else, nobody else celebrates San Jose Obrero, which is why they're doing it there. And then this is really typical of, of um, a town, I mean, of a festival in, in, a, in a place that's more sort of in the, in the mainstream than the others. And you can see there's a lot of like plastic masks and a lot of degeneration now. This is Christians and Moors. You're going to see much more on these later. This is the dance of the, what they call the Ocho Locos, or the Siete Vicios. And um, he re represents the... Um,
you know, welcoming and there's a lot of celebration and they, they uh, purify, purify them with, these, uh, with incense and, and there's, you know, a lot of activity to welcome the crosses down from the top of the mountain. And they bring them over and they set up this altar here where they, they decorate them and they're really, really nice to them. And, uh, they, offer, they make offerings to the crosses, and uh, whatever it is they're offering is what they'd like to receive back, like corn. See, this man is making an offering of, of corn, because that's really what, they, what they're after. And these are, this is a, a ceremony that, you know, for the crosses, which they do for, you know, maybe an hour, and then they, they take them. Uh, these are flowers. That, that have been in close proximity, and so that they set, soak up some of the holiness that they take to their houses, and they bring them luck during the year, that they split up the, the flowers that are involved in this. And then they go in procession, and they march the crosses back up to the, to the, to the, to the, to the church, which is up on top of the hill. And the Tlacololeros is a big, big procession, and the Tlacololeros sort of lead it. You can see them coming in in this little town, which is... One of the most amazing places that I saw in Mexico. Now, they took the cross to the, I had to kind of shorten this up. So the cross had spent the night in the church. And so this is early the next morning, and this is at the top of the mountain, which is called Cruzco. That's Lala, where we were right just a while ago. The river is right there, where you saw the, that ceremony there. And this is now the top of the mountain, which is called Cruzco, where the crosses live all, all during the year. And to show you what it looks like around there. We're right here, this part right here. And then these people are, are making these, weaving these uh, flowers out of uh, agave, or these uh, yucca leaves. And they're doing that to, to um, decorate an arch that they're making. This is Cruzco. And they've put the crosses, they brought the crosses up and they put them back up where they're supposed to be with all the, all the offerings from the day before. And um, these are machitos. This is a, a dance group that kind of joins them. You can see how high we are. That's, this is a, a group of uh, jaguars, that, uh, tequanis, that came in to dance. They're the ones that, that really, you'll see at the end, that they're, they're the ones that put on the great fight at the end of the that you'll see after a while. Now, these are cro this is an arch that they've made with the, with the flowers and some, and some sticks. And also, they've taken a, 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 a lot of chickens and turkeys up there to eat, and they were all alive. And so they were killed, um, they were sacrificed and killed in a, in a ritual way. And then they're cooked to feed everybody that goes up there. And all the in innards, all the... Uh, the, you know the guts and stuff from all the chickens and turkeys and things are, are hanging on this on this arch, and they bring the arch up and they put it around where the rest of the uh, where the crosses are, and they and they hang all the viscera and and the ch chickens that are too scrawny to fool with and all from the arch, <laughs> and so you can see that. Anyway, the whole idea here is that they're, 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 and they're gonna, they're gonna, then they're, they're cooking the chickens and turkeys that you saw that the guts came from, and then they're bringing them up. They're like, there's a turkey that's, that's on the way to be devoured, and another one. And the whole idea here is that they're gonna have, they're gonna sit down and have their, what they call the taco. They're gonna eat, and, um, and after, the, after they eat, they leave all the bones and all the leftovers from the meal in a big pile in front of the altar. And they've already got the chickens and turkeys and guts and everything hanging up here. And so then the whole group of them retreats back down to the village. And the whole idea is that they've made an offering to the buzzards. And they're called the, the, the buitres because when, when, the <clears throat> when the buzzards come down to eat, the sky comes down and it brings the rain. So that's what that's, what that's all about. There's another uh, mountain. This is, this is as I was leaving, just to show you this peak up in the middle. And it was really, really hard getting there. Um, this is in Sitlala itself. This is the highest peak in, that, in, the, in the little village that you just saw the pictures of. And they have another altar up. This is a place called Sitlaltepec, 
and, and they're doing the same thing here. And these are all full of turkeys and things that, are, that have been sacrificed, but they're going to take them home to eat them. Then these, the jaguars, the tequanis, they all come out and they dance around. These are the guys that really, that you'll see, and they're the ones that pull everything together at the end. These are masks that are made out of um, bullhide. And bullhide is, um, it's uncured bullhide, so they really smell terrible. But um, it's the only way that they, 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 they like to they use un, uncured bullhide because it's real hard. And they, they need the rigidity because they're really, they turn their helmets. Now, this is another mountain close by that we were up, up you know, further on down somewhere up, up in here. That this is another uh, mountain up, up above Acatlan. That last place was where the crosses from the town of Zitlala live. These are where the crosses of the town of Acatlan live. And then this is another festival that's very similar. And they have these beautiful altars that, that uh, the crosses are here underneath the... All, all the offerings, which you can just see the extent that they go to. Rich. Everybody um, weaves their own. <clears throat> These are also offerings. Now, these are cirrus flowers. You know, cirrus is a, looks like a cactus that lives up in the, they're ep epiphytic and they live in the trees. Um, <clears throat> anyway, every once in a while they'll throw out these big flowers. So these people go around and they, they have a, I don't know how they do it, but they raise all these, they get all these flowers together. They stick them on the end of a, of a branch that doesn't have any leaves or anything else on it. So those are actually flowers that are stuck on the end of a branch and turn into a banner. Much like the pre-Columbian banners, the, the feather banners. But this is kind of the, um, the idea now. Now they're coming with one of the crosses, and they hold it up there, and, and then they, they have a, a rosary or a mass, actually a rosary. This is a sacrificial stone where they killed all the where the chickens were killed, to see the chicken's blood. There's some chickens being singed. Same thing, they cook um, a fabulous chicken soup that feeds everybody up there. They don't have a deal where they hang the, the viscera, though, in this town. Th this is a dance that um, I'd always call Wikixlis, but I found out that, that they're really supposed to be called Kolatlatzi. And they represent the wind. And they're uh, in Catla. And um, they're almost never still. They, they go in single file through the, um, through the crowd. They're always moving. And they make kind of grunting noises, kind of like, ooh, 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 like that. Every once in a while, they'll stop and form a circle. And one of them will take this stick right here, which is a heavy stick. And he gets on his back. And with, with, just with using his feet, he can't use his hands. He puts his stick up like that and manipulates it and then throws it up in the air and catches it. And every time he does that, they're all, see how they're all holding their faces? They all go like, woo, 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 or something. It's, but this, is, this dance is in the Sagun Kodak. So this is a pre-Columbian, this is an Aztec dance from, from God knows when, because it might even, it could have even predated them. But it's, it's one of the, it's, it's something that they're still doing. Now, I'm going to put, um, these festivals online. And as we go, I'm going to like be finding uh, information and adding them to the Picasso website that, uh, that I'm going to use for this so that you'll be able to get into this stuff in detail. This is a teponachle, and this guy usually runs in front. And they keep cadence for the festival, They're like, tum -tum, tum -tum, tum -tum. and they're as they run around. Now these are tlacololeros, and uh, there's not much uh, on them here. You're going to see a lot of this later. You can see this is the the um, this is 
These are dances that, that have a, that's what the first dance that I'm showing you that has a device to, that, that inflicts pain. And you can see that they're popping each other with these whips. And um, they've, got a, they've got like one arm is like padded that they hold out. And they do a series of steps and they turn around and they square off and one of them will pop one guy and then the other guy will pop back. And they hold their arm out and they're supposed to hit the, the padded part, but lots of times they don't. And when they don't, the, the lash from the whip, the pain caused by the lash is the propitiation to the rain god. And now this is, um, these are the jaguar fights. And th this is the most extraordinary thing. Th this, this activity is the most extraordinary cultural activity that I found in all my meanders down there. That these guys actually, in this little town up, up on the hill, they, they fight with welder's gloves, which is more like a boxing match. But um, in Chiglala, they fight with uh, knotted ropes, as you'll see. These are just some pictures that I like from these fights. Now, this is the next day, and this is um, in town on the way from church to the Awewete, which is, um, the Awewete is uh, this water cypress. Wherever one of these trees grows is sacred because there's water there. These trees need to feed on actual water. So anywhere you ever see one of these trees, if you dig down, you'll find water. And so it's a sacred site, and it's where it's, this is the town spring where people used to come. To, to, to what they still kind of do, come get water out of there. And then these, this is a, a change of mayordomos. They're, they're coming in to, to welcome the new mayordomo, and the mayordomos are the ones that pay for all of this. Lots of times there are people who have made a lot of money in agriculture, and the way they share the wealth is by paying for the whole festival, feeding everybody and getting them all drunk. <laughs> You can see this is, there's the old mayordomo put, putting, you know, feeding the new ones. He's the mayordomo. Now, this is another dance here called the maromeros. I'm sorry, um, they're called, um, yeah, maro, yeah, maromero, that's right. And it's, it's, it's a dance that, this is also in, in one of the codexes that, um, it's a dance that, that they've been doing for, for hundreds of years, it's where they walk a tightrope. And, <clears throat> and they have to stay, if, if anybody falls off the tightrope, um, it, it could bode, bode ill for the entire community. So they really have to know their stuff, and I've never seen one fall. And they do a lot of really fancy stuff up there, so they really know their stuff. But um, the idea is that if you walk a straight line, you'll get to the other side. But if you walk a crooked line, you'll fall off into the abyss. And that's what, that's what this whole thing represents. This guy here is uh, dancing the woman's part. He's known as a marigia. And he's one of the best tightrope guys. Borachos come dance with them. And there's a triumph of alcohol. Mezcal. Pictures of the mayordomia. Great, it's pozole, and it really tastes good. This is, these are um, Christians, and these are Moors. This year come the Wikixlis, and that's, that, that's how you usually see them, or the Kokolatlatzin now, that I always call them Wikixlis. See how they come in and file, and they come run through the festival.
This is la Malinche. This is la danza de los mecos. This is a dance that they, that they dance to remind them about what they were before they were evangelized. And she represents the, la Malinche. You know, she was Cortez's girlfriend and the, was the great traitor to, to the Mexicans. But they, they, <clears throat> they honor her a lot. And then they all dance together. And the, the, main, the main ones are, the, are, the, are death and, and the devil, which you'll see in a minute. The bishop dies at the end. Then he's carried out. See, this is the bishop, and the devil's riding him, but this picture's a little bit dark. It's the triumph of the devil. Here, here they're dancing together. These are the two main characters of this dance. And this is a later one. You know, this is the same dance, but a different. Th this was in 2006, and the other ones were back in 1990 and 94, like that. So this is more modern here. Now, this is a place called Aguasarca. This is um, up in the mountains, up above the mountain that you just saw. And they're coming, they're coming into the spring from this little town to honor the, the, the Lord of the Spring. Here's some children that are all little girls and some of the women, and the, they all hang together. They were being eaten up by these little uh, gnats. I had one, one bottle of this real strong um, anti-bug stuff, and they, they used about half the bottle and it cured them. They really they ended up really liking me for that. But anyway, this is looking at it from the top of the, of the uh, hill where the spring is. And this is the spring. Here it is, it's being decorated. But anyway, they pray and they make offerings and all. It's just to, to help, you know, help the water come. And you know, as soon as it starts raining, this all turns into like a waterfall. It's really a very rich spring, but you can see it just completely dry, and that's one of the reasons that they're also, you know, so dogmatic about getting this done. Just some more soup. <laughs> People eating. Then there's dancing after that. I can't remember the name of this dance, but it's just another typical um, dance that celebrates it. Now this is a town called Santa Catarina. This guy's bringing in some sky rockets, and this, this is full of mezcal. And this has got a, a turkey in it. And they come in to make offerings in the church. I'm real fascinated with ephemera, the way they can take, you know, paper and flowers and stuff to turn it into make places that end up looking magical. <clears throat> I'm also very impressed by their devotion to their to their um, you know to their crosses and sacred things. Those are offerings, and there are turkeys in there, and then mezcal. This is my friend Juan Alejo Alillo. He's one of the main reasons that I was able to, nego to negotiate those hills. His grandfather was uh, uh, an assassin for Zapata, and there's a whole neighborhood named after his grandfather. So his name is El Tigre, and he's a wild guy, but a really good friend. And I've been, uh, he's been, we've been pals since 1990. Now we're up in, a te pardon? The pottery, the, the pottery is, um, they're, they're garrafones. So they're actually full of mezcal. They're like little, uh, little uh, bulls. So, yeah, I think there's, see? Yeah. And do you have a for Yes, this is Santa Catarina. Now, I'm not sure if 
This was made there, or but it's somewhere in those in those hills. Um, it could very well be Santa Catarina, but it could be uh, Aguasarca, Huecotzingo. There's all these little villages up there, and I'm not real sure which one of them do them, but, but you see them all over the place. I can find out. Now these are, uh, this is a dance, this is another dance that has a device that, where it uh, inflicts pain. And this is known as the dance of the costeños. So they call it the costeños up here. And th this is a, one of the fishermen, and this is the, um, this is a fish, but what they're really after is this is this is a like a, a alligator, and <clears throat> here you see him. He's got a short tail that's made out of um, tire rubber. You know, like if you get a tire and straighten it out and then cut a strip off of it and tie it all together. That's what that is. And so these other guys are trying to catch it. See, basically what it is is that you've got this this alligator that's in the middle of your lake and he's eating all your fish. And so they're trying to catch, catch him, and, and the, the circle that they make around him defines the lake. And as they go in and try to get him, he turns around and whips him and lashes him with his tail. And, um, so, and so in this town, it's, it's, not, it's, it's not as dramatic as it is where you're going to see it in a little bit. But that's what's going on. As they, as they close in on him, they try to cut pieces of the tail off to you know, keep him from, from hitting him more. But as you can see, um, when they get hit, they feel it. I mean, it's, I'm sorry. This is at the end of the dance where they catch the guy. This was some children playing it at night, but that give you an idea what, what's going on there. This is, come on in. <laughs> this is a town called La, La Esperanza. And um, <laughs> I've walked in on a party. <laughs> Here's outside. They're in this little house right here. Here they are dancing outside with, with their turkeys. You see, another turkey, another turkey right there. And they dance them, and then later on they sacrifice them, and they take them up. Here they're taking them up to put them on the altar. And this, is, this altar is located in another water hole that they're hoping to get going. And they have a, a, a little meal up there that's like mole with a, a hard boiled eggs. These are acatecas. Now, the men, women, and children get out in the fields in this little area, and they just duke it out until one gives up. And the pain they both suffer, of course, is the offering to the rain god. But everybody kind of gets in on the act. It's men, women, and children. They're the girls. You know, when I was taking these pictures, <clears throat> my friend Juan Alejo Alilio, the El Tigre, came over and got me and he says, we've got to get out of here right now. And I said, wait, wait, wait. And I was getting all these great pictures. And he says, we have to go. You don't understand what you're saying. And he just gra grabbed me and started dragging me by my bags. And, uh, and we started running. And pretty soon, there, all the women started running. They wanted to beat me up. For for taking the, he heard it, and they all sound like a bunch of ducks and said they were coming after me. And so we just really ran, and, and we made it. <laughs> this is inside one of the houses up on the mountain in uh, Zitlala. And this is the, like a chamber where everybody's getting dressed to go down and, and fight. These are the great jaguar fights. This is the afternoon of the 5th of May. And this is the culmination of all the Santa Cruz festivals that you've been seeing here. And they're all running down um, to the, that's where the church is, and the mayor's office is right there. the procession down to the, they're all drunk. And they want to fight first because, um, you know, the, if you're drunk, you don't feel the pain as bad as, as when you're not. And you can see they're all pressing forward. They all want to be first.
See, this is the church, and then this is in front of the mayor's office. This was in 1990. Uh, this has changed over the years. That they had one year that they put some ropes around there. They try to keep the crowd from crushing in later, but it never works. You know, they're squaring off for the, what's called the tequalitzli. These are tequanis. They're called tequanis. A tequani is one who draws blood. And the tequalitzli is the act of drawing blood. And so that's what this is. And the whole idea is that they're trading blows until one gives up. And the pain they both suffer is the offering to the rain god. But the way they get the pain is through this ritual, ritual combat. Look at the expressions on their faces there. See, he's giving up there. See, look. <laughs> Oops. Oops. This is as it gets later, the crowds get start pressing in. Look at Kurt Cobain. <laughs> <laughs> Some blood. And by the you know, they, there's a lot of drinking that goes on. A lot of drinking. And so the drunker they get, the stronger that they push in. This is the mass maker's house. There's some of those Wikixli masks, or Kodatlatzin masks. This is for the machitos. We haven't, you haven't seen those. It's just a you know, pretty kind of a funny little dance. Now, <clears throat> we're in a town called Cuaxlahuacan, and we're going to go from here up to the top of this volcano up here, where, um, where, where they're going to do this ceremony. Here they're arriving at the top of the volcano. Th these are the offerings and, and food that they're bringing up there. And of course, they serve everybody to eat. This is the, the uh, jaguar that uh, dances in the, in the Tlacololeros, with the Tlacololeros, which is this pre-Columbian dance that comes from probably before the Aztecs. And this is the, one, the other one where you, know, you see them popping each other with the whips. And see, ostensibly, they're supposed to hit here where nobody gets hurt, but. You know, you got these heavy hats and stuff, but it it, it always misses, and it all you know, the pain they suffer is the is the offering. It's all very organized. They have beautiful uh, choreography for this. I wish I had some movies of it. See, and they go around like that, and then they do these little steps and they'll um, square off. See, the, and the jaguar catches, catches them, and at the end, they kill the jaguar. It's, it's to, um, to keep, uh, you know, to kill evil, defeat evil. Now, these guys, you saw that dance in Huecotzingo, where they had the alligator that would pop people with his, with his tail. This is the real McCoy here. These guys come out, and they're all wearing these paper streamers. And these paper streamers then measure how close they're working to the wire. And what happens here is here's the, this is the alligator. And see this wire right here? This is about 15 or 20 feet long. And so when they come in to try to catch him, he can, he can whip, whip that around where that wire goes so fast that you can't see it. And, and when it hits you, I mean, you really know it. I've been hit with it. And it feels like, like somebody just went across you with a blowtorch. I mean, it really, really, really hurts. Anyway, um, they have to more or less guess where the wire is. And they have like one arm bandaged up and <clears throat> underneath here. And they'll go in with a machete. And they go in like this, and they try to like guess where the wire is. And if the wire hits the machete, it'll cut it. So they kind of close in. But they're wearing these streamers to, to see who's, who's working close to the wire. Because uh, when the wire comes across, it'll cut the streamers. And then it shows that these guys are actually you know participating rather than standing around. And see, here's the. Um, 
they're trying to catch him. See, this is the lake. I mean, these guys define the lake, and he's the alligator in there. See, there's the wire just hit there. Look at that. But those streamers are all cut by the, by the wire, so it shows the people that are, you know, getting close. That's how they can measure it. And this is the Meckel stance again. Here, here's uh, death killing the bishop. These pictures are off, you know, on, on here that they're real, real light, but over here they're kind of dark. <laughs> See, now this is the late afternoon. We've come back down from the top of that mountain, and they're still playing. And sometimes this dance lasts for five days. It's not until they can cut in and catch him that, um, that, it's, that it ends. This is a place called Cuaxlahuacan uh, Guerrero. This is outside of uh, Chilpancingo, which is the capital. Now, this is the same town, but a different year. And this is the festival. That was the top, mountaintop festival. This is the festival that they have at the, at the river. And it's basically the same thing. They all kind of show up and, you know, they, be, they have ritual baths. And um, you can see how beautiful it is up there. The Tlacoleros come. And this is their altar. That It's another sacred spot where they, it's a spring that they're honoring. The Lord of the Spring. The music goes. Comes the jaguar. The Tlacololeros are all popping whips. and dancing around down there. Different masks. Now, this is another town called Mochitlan. Mochitlan is, uh, is close by, and this is just another festival. This, this festival is on the, uh, actually the 26th of July which is the Santa Ana festival, but it's another one where they all kind of get back together. It's an interesting festival because there's a lot of masks and these are um, Moors. I forget the name of this dance. So. There's so many of them. Only in Mexico. <laughs> this is their procession. This is the, um, again, the Mecos. Um, to show you some ephemera, the beautiful arches that they make out of the uh, yucca, fly, yucca leaves and marigolds. And this is a torito. Some, some of these are that, that agricultural dances, you know, that have to do with the ranches and stuff. Christians and Moors. This is from the Meco stance. These are called um, diablos, but they dance with, a, with some goats, with the chi chivos. It's a dance called the chivos y los diablos. And they, they play these um, wooden boxes that they clack back and forth together. It's, you know, um, Cow's jaw, painted silver. Sacololeros. These are the guys that you saw in the. This is, he's the main guy in the Tlacololero dance, the, the ones that you saw in the invitation.
You know, here they're Maromeros. And you can see. This is a Manuelito dance, and this dance lampoons uh, the upper classes. This is a dance that actually started in the colonial time, and they did it to, 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 so they could, they could express themselves against the upper classes in, in a way that was, that was okay with the upper classes. They're called Manuelitos. These, these are mechos again, part of that the uh, little um, procession. And these are again the pescaditos. This was taken in 1994. These other ones were taken in later. See the wire? And then here's the tail, and it goes all around like that. It sticks way out. See, he's trying to cut the cut the wire. And that's it.